Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stud Pack, and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House Build. I got a great idea. Let's do another one. Guys, have you ever noticed how your garage door trim always rots right here? Well, typically that's because it's treated like interior trim. They stick a two by on there, untreated, or a one by on there, untreated, and it won't last. It would be great if your garage door closed out here, but it doesn't. Your garage door closes in here. So whatever you do right here has to be just as bulletproof as the rest of your building. And that's not what's gonna happen 99% of the time. Almost every time I see a garage door opening, it is framed in dimensional untreated lumber. When I say dimensional, I mean two by tens. I've seen two by twelves, two by eights, all kind of things cobbled together at that critical junction. A lot of times they'll put the end of that wood, that untreated wood, right on the slab where rainwater is gonna soak right up. Sometimes they'll hold it up a little bit and sometimes they'll even put a chamfer on the bottom of that board to give it a little bit longer life. But water is always gonna find that ingrain outside, and once that water soaks into the wood, your paint is gonna fail, and once your paint fails, that board is wide open to all kind of water getting into it. Once that trim piece starts to rot, what's next? The stuff that's holding up your garage, right? So if you wanna protect it from that, if you wanna protect your framing from rotting, take off your trim pieces and protect your framing from any water that might get to it. You can use Zip Tape or Liquid Flash by Huber or Lexel by Sashko is another great product. It'll all prevent that water from soaking in to your framing. Once you have that protected, go ahead and put your trim boards back, but use something like Hardy, like we're using, or Azek, a PVC trim that'll never rot. All right, guys, back here at the Stud Pack Garage. Check out this awesome detail we did on our garage doors to protect our framing. Started with our green zip and our zip tape. This is our WRB, our weather resistant barrier. We are dried in and we wrapped it around this corner to protect the framing underneath here, a spot that always rots also. So why wouldn't you take your WRB and bring it towards the inside of the building? Your garage door is gonna be here, you got total protection. We took that protection one step further down here at the bottom. We didn't want that raw OSB edge on the bottom. So we took this piece of tape and we encased it. So we're always gonna be dry right there and this board won't wick up moisture. And now just because we have our framing protected doesn't mean we can go ahead and put up some cheap untreated wood on the trim. You're gonna end up with the same problem. So we use three quarter inch smooth hardy right here on the jam, one inch casing, all attached with stainless steel finish nails. Now we got the front of the building all trimmed out and it looks absolutely amazing. Now Jordan and I spent all day yesterday button heads trying to figure out all the details. We came to some compromises and we figured it all out. And I gotta say, this right here is garage door trim perfection. Come check this out. We've got a four foot level down here on the flashing over our water table. And let's put our eight foot level against the casing on the garage door. Now it's one thing to be square, but is this casing parallel to our corner board? Check it out guys. Right at 79, a little bit under. Come up here at the top, just under 79. Absolutely love it. Now trimming out a garage door is way harder than it seems. Jordan and I have a lot of cool tips and tricks to show you how to dial it into perfection. Let's get started. All right, guys, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna hop up here on the ladder. We've got an eight foot level. We're gonna put it right up here at the top and we're gonna see if we got a high spot. And as you can see in here, I got a high spot, really a low spot right here. The level is rocking right here. I know it's on this piece of zip. I'm gonna come off the ladder. I got a piece of our material that's three quarter of an inch thick, the same as our jam material. And I'm simply gonna tack it up at our low spot. Very next step, I have a piece of a material that's the same width as our casing and I have my combination square set at a quarter inch. That's our reveal. I reveal from here to the edge of the casing. I'm gonna put it on just like that, make a mark. That mark, we're gonna extend level to each side and that's gonna reference the top of our casing. My next step is to transfer this mark all the way out to the sides of my opening. How am I gonna do that? Well, in our case, I'm gonna use the band for our deck. We know that it's within, what Jordan? The 16th out of level based on our water level video. So I'm at 22 and 15 to that line. 
just gonna go over here, make a mark at 22 and 15. Another one on my left, we'll connect the dots with a chalk line. So what if you don't have a very convenient level line up there like we did to make this line? You got three options, basically a laser level, a bubble level, or check out our last video and see what a water level can do for you. Our next step is to get the length of our head casing. Got a scrap of our jam material. I'm gonna put it on there and I have a line marked at a quarter inch, the same as our reveal. Another scrap, scraps are your friend. Line it up on your reveal mark. See, I got it on my pencil line. Perfect, just holding it with my left hand till I like it. I'll make a mark over here on the left hand side. That's the left hand end of the board. We're gonna do the same thing on the right hand end of the board. Measure that, cut it to length. Five and a half. All right, guys, our first piece of trim is up on the outside. Now, why are we going to all this trouble? Why can't we just slap the trim up against the framing? Because it's rough framing, and we don't want our trim to be rough. We want to dial our trim in. Jordan's walking here to the other side, and you can see this really well. Right here about in the middle, that piece of trim is sticking down a little more than 5 eighths from our zip right here. But look at the right-hand side. I can visually see it, and if we measure it, we are what, Jordan, 7 eighths, an inch. almost an inch? kind of way out. What happened on that framing day? So when you reference the trim to the framing, it looks off, but when we grab the level and put it on the trim, check this out. A perfect gang right where we want to be. And that's why we're making this video gang, because these garage doors can be a pain in the rear, especially the 18 footer behind Jordan. All right, guys, our top jam is all cut. I'm gonna walk it over to Jordan and we're gonna put it in place and scribe it to the drywall. This is a step we like to do to make sure our trim is dialed in and a lot of times like on that door behind me that is not a consistent width up there so let me hold this up there jordan's going to describe it and we'll show you what it looks like on the back good yes sir so good yep. so good yep. how's that look not perfect all right you're good we got our board on our cut station. Let's take a few measurements. Six and five eighths width right here. Six and nine, and come to the end. What, six and 11, six and three quarter. That's why we scribe it. It's gonna be tight when we put up our trim, little caulk joints. We're not filling in massive three quarter inch cracks with caulk, something we hate to do. Let's grab our circular saw with a hardy blade, trim that off and go install it. All right, guys, remember that quarter inch reveal we talked about right here, that really important detail you always have on door casing. We did the same thing and we just drew a line here. It's gonna give us an aid as we push this up and nail it to here. We're gonna nail through the casing into our jam and get our reveal just perfect. We have one nail way out here just to take the weight of this. We're gonna dial that in later, but it's really important now to get this corner dialed in perfect. All right, we got our head jam up and our reveal is looking great just like we wanted. But check out our head jam. It is not level. I can see it with my eye. I'm gonna prove it to you with the torpedo level, but look what happens if we leave it out of level. When I put up my side jam, I'm gonna have the dreaded taper right there. And guess what most people do? Just fill it with caulk. But it's a really easy solution to fix that, right? We're just gonna get a shim in here. Watch what happens if I can push this in. Do all this, there we go. Look at that guys, put the level on there, we're dialed in. So we're gonna do that all the way and get this thing perfectly flat. It's gonna make our trim look great once it's all painted. All right, that is perfect just where we want it. Now I'm sure a bunch of you are laughing at us. Guys, it's the back garage door. Who cares? Throw it up there, put some caulk on it, paint it, and you'll be good. But you know what? 
in the main house or maybe in your big remodel or your big construction addition, you're gonna have huge interior doors and you're gonna need these same skills. So why not hone them, perfect them in the garage, then you can bring them inside where everybody's gonna see it. All right guys, our head jam and our head casing are in place. They look great. Our very next step is to do the side jams. All we gotta do is rip it to this dimension, six and five eighths. We're gonna pre-assemble our casing, attach it to the wall. Let's head to the saws. <laughs> So our jam is cut, now let's get our casing measured and cut. I want the bottom of the casing to line up with the bottom of the corner board hidden in that pile way over there. So I've already measured that distance from the bottom of the rim on the deck to the bottom of the corner board, 122 inches, love even numbers. Now all I gotta do to get my number for my casing is to subtract the distance between the bottom of the band, the bottom of the head casing, got my number. 122 minus 26 and 3 eighths. Nothing like a drywall chalkboard. All right guys, all the hardy is up on the back door. That completes all the hardy trim on the front and the back doors. A couple of really important details we wanna show you. Come on down here, Jordan. Per the manufacturer, they don't want the hardy touching the concrete. So we left a quarter inch gap right there and it's primed with our latex primer. It's gonna be bulletproof. Now, speaking of primer, we're getting a lot of comments about the trim we're putting on the building. How in the world are you guys putting up tan trim? We're not putting up tan trim, we're putting up hardy primed trim. This is the prime color that comes from the factory and this is the backside that comes unprimed. Now, in our excitement to make videos for you guys, sometimes, we put the unprimed side out just like we did right here. We're gonna give that a coat of primer, two coats of finished color. It's gonna look beautiful. But since all the hardy is done, I say now we turn our focus to the inside of the building. We're gonna cut off our shims, fill the gap with some spray foam, and put up our trim pieces on the inside. Can't wait to show you those. Let's get started. Man, carbide blades, man, by Diablo. Saw them on the uh, concrete show in Vegas uh, video. These things are brutal. Not a very good test for them on a little stupid shim, but man. All right, guys, this is a conditioned space. We want to fill all the gaps we can, so we're going to insulate this little guy right here. All right guys, all the exterior trim on our garage doors is done. And it's aesthetic, right? It makes the building look great. But we also have to trim out the inside of the door. It's gonna make it look great, but it also has an important function. Our garage door company, yes, we are putting garage doors on here, despite your comments, wants a two by six mounted right here to mount the track for the garage door too. So that's what we're gonna do. We spent the whole first half of the video telling not to put interior wood on the garage door. And now we're gonna do it, but we have a solution. We called them and asked them about this and they said they're gonna have a piece of weather stripping. It's a piece of vinyl that's gonna conform to the door right here and it's gonna cover this. It's gonna be great. We're gonna seal it and this will never see weather. So we ran over to our lumber yard, picked up four 20 footers and we ran each edge through the table saw to cut off that ugly factory edge. And now we have this profile which looks a lot like our Hardy, right? but there is one area we're concerned about. Let me grab my little sample, Jordan. We'll go back in the garage. We want this all the way down, right? Like that. If I hold it up, stuff's just gonna get in here, right? Spiders and dirt. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a piece of ASEC on the bottom, a little foot. Got them all cut right here. And that little foot is gonna set on the concrete. So if we ever get any water in the garage, less than that dimension, this is gonna be fine. We got our stainless steel screws. We're gonna attach our feet to the bottom, put them up, and we're ready for our head. I think a great first step though is to cover this end grain with some Lexel. Oh yeah, man. That's nice. That's gonna last forever. Sweet. All right, we got all our little feet on. It's gonna work great. Now it's just a matter of resting that foot on the concrete at our uh, jam location. Just come up here, mark it to my length. You'll notice I marked it flush. In other words, this board is gonna go flush here. 
There's no reveal like on that side. That's because of our weather stripping. It's got to sit flush right here. Let's head to the saw, cut all these. All right, guys, all the trim is up on the garage doors inside and out. Really happy with the way they turned out. We have a little bit of more work to do, right? We got to fill the nail holes, little sanding, little caulk, prime paint. It's going to look great, but that's for later. Right now, we want to show you a little bit about this back wall and how we're going to detail it and a piece of trim that we added kind of on the fly. Now we're putting board and batten on the sides from the band down. Those sheets come four feet wide, 10 feet tall. Check this out. I'm going to try to hook my magnet right there. Nine, ten, ten, two and a half, something like that, to the bottom of our casing. So we would have a gap. Our 10 foot sheet would have to end here if we pushed it all the way up. And if we brought it all the way down, we'd have a big gap at the top. So we went back and forth. How are we going to fix that? What are we going to do? So we decided to add what's called a water table. Remember that band around the middle of the building and the freeze at the top? A water table is a similar detail at the base of a building. So we just got some three and a half by one inch material. We're gonna run it between our corner boards and that's gonna give us that extra width we need so we can put a full sheet of board up there for our board and batten without any joints. And this water table allows us to put another piece of waterproofing on this building that we absolutely love. But for right now, let's throw some Lexel on each end of this water table, throw it in. Just like the front of the building, gang, all our trim details coming out nice and level, so our siding goes a lot easier. All right, guys, check this out. It is flashing time. Yes, absolutely. We're putting flashing all over this garage to keep the water out. Now, here's one of the things you really don't see on our channel. We thought we had the flashing package all figured out and it was supposed to be delivered Monday morning. Today is Friday. Got a call, we're not coming, it's not ready. Jordan scrambled, got on the phone, got on the computer, called a bunch of roofing companies, and they all recommended the same place. He emailed them the drawings, three different sizes, two different colors, and by two that same day, they had it all fabricated. The place is over there by the county jail. It's called Metal Mart. Let's give them a big W, Metal Mart, in the comments for hooking us up with the flashing. Here it is, as I said, three different profiles, two different colors. Check this out, we even put a three degree bevel on the edge. So the water's gonna roll right off. This piece already measured. Let's cut it to length, stick it on the building. All right, this is 26 gauge steel, it's painted white. And then all I do is I fatigue that edge right there till it snaps off. There's no way for me to get my cutters in there. It's gonna break clean and it's gonna look like we use cutters on it. Check that out. It even gives you a nice little tab for the plastic if you break it away like that. Oh, to pull the plastic yeah. off? Yeah, look, look how nice that looks. Pull that plastic protection off, boom. All right, guys, sheet metal's 10 feet long. That door, 10 foot, five inches, so we gotta splice it. A lot of ways we could do that. You could butt splice it. That's not really great, is it? You could also just overlap and put one on top like that, but check out this. You'll see that all the time. So we're gonna show you a little trick. We got this piece cut a little long. See that triangle right there? I'm gonna cut that off with my shears. I always put my hand over it, because they go flying, even though I got safety glasses. That could end up somewhere, we don't want it. All right, guys, this little piece of metal right here where it's folded back on itself, that's called a hem. We got to open it up because we got something that's going to go inside there. I'm just using this little screwdriver. It does the job pretty well for us. Look good, Jordan? Mm -hmm. So let me turn these over and show you how they're going to made up. We're going to slide just like that. See that, Jordan? And then on the top, we just have one thickness of sheet metal here instead of two when it was a full hem. And you're overlapped. And I'm overlapped and stitched together. Let's pull the plastic off, go put this guy up. There we go guys, custom fit. Now we're simply attaching it with our coil nailer. We have one and three quarter hot dip galvanized nails. That's the same thing we're gonna be using for all our siding. Just got a box of what, Jordan, 9,000 of them? Yep. And that's gonna be plenty for this building. Here we go. Little zip tape, we're all flashed in. And that's a clean detail sticking it behind there, Jordan. Love that. All right, let's roll the tape.
All right, guys, we're almost done with all the flashing details. On this side of the building, we did run out of zip tape, but no worries, we got another case on the way. But before we can call this side done, a couple more things we gotta do, and it has to do with our line sets right here. This is our line set for, I, don't, I can't even remember now, the upstairs or the downstairs. This is the cable that communicates with the indoor unit, and this is our power. We got one for up, one for down. But we don't wanna just leave these here and put our siding around it. We wanna do a little better than that, kind of like what we did over here with all the electrical equipment. In fact, Jordan, let's show them what your house looks like and how they did the line sets and the electric on your mini split. And this is more typical. Got a big old hole in the siding, one up there in the eave. No sense of what's, uh, what's neat, it's just run like whatever, right? And it doesn't even work. It doesn't even work. We should just take that down and scrap it. Now, do you guys remember when Joel was here with Jefferson Electric and he helped us with all the electric and we bought that $500 sheet of one inch thick AZEC board we put behind all the electrical equipment? Well, this is what's left along with the little piece over there for unit number two. Now we could bolt everything to the siding, but that's tough, right? If you have clabbered, you got gaps, if you have board and batten, those are in the way. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna mount everything to this PDC, just like you see we have it laid out here and then our siding comes right up to the edges. It's gonna look great. So let me walk you through it. First, right here on the left, we got the brackets for the mini split. Now I imagine this little piece right here goes this way, but if I flip it over, it just gains me a little height. So that's why I did that. We have our disconnect for the electric. It's a 60 amp, but we just have a little 20 amp circuit. It's all we need. Can you believe that? 20 amp circuit to heat the downstairs, cool the downstairs, same for upstairs. Can't wait to see what Jordan's electric bill is gonna be. Now this is the really, cool. this is, yeah. <laughs> and this little jewel right here, that is the star of the show and we have two of them. Made in the USA and California by AirX Manufacturing. This is their TSS series, comes in different colors and it's a much better way for a line set to penetrate a building. It protects against weather, obviously, class two vapor retarding, it's removable, stops air leakage, stops the rodents, improves your indoor air quality, and lessens pipe vibration. Let's clear this off, drill some holes, get this thing mounted. that. All right guys, all two of our mounting boards are installed. Of course, we are going to flash it just like this, just like everything else. And we are going to put our Airx boot on there, but I think we want to paint this first and then put all our stuff on there so we're not trying to cut in around brackets and the boot and the disconnect. Besides, it is Saturday. It's freezing out here. We want to get inside. All right guys, I know I just said it was cold. We want to get out of here, but you'd be tripping if you think we're not going to put a piece of board and batten up on our building. This whole side is ready. We can't wait to see what it looks like. So we're gonna put a piece up right now and see how it looks. We got it all set up right here. Let's cut it and install it. Capillary action may want to pull some water coming off this band onto our siding. So we're gonna put some big stretch there. Nice, and we'll shove it up in there. Wipe it with our finger, bulletproof. Put up another piece, why not? Dude, we're flying. I got a great idea. Let's do another one. Battens anyone? All right, guys, check it out. We put a few battens in. We nailed the ones over the seams. Remember, our boards are four feet wide, but we need your help. Since the boards are four feet wide, we can put the battens at 12 inches apart, which is a little close. 16, like you see right there, or you could even go 24, like you see right there. This is a big building. I think it can support that, but Jordan and I kind of leaning towards the 16. Let us know what you think in the comments, but we're gonna wrap up this video. We had a blast making it for you. We hope you enjoyed it. So case out and flash your like button, smash it for us. Please subscribe, 
If you want some stud pack merch, head on over to buckerbranding.com. They will absolutely hook you up. And we're over on Instagram if you want to check us out at Stud Pack Official. We'll see you right back here on the very next Stud Pack video. <laughs>